machine guns, helicopters already flying over overhead because they were there to capture the opening ceremony. So the news cameras and everything was there. <clears throat> and it was like a war zone. It really was. Um, you know, when I ran around the corner, I saw the bridge had sort of collapsed on in on itself because it was sort of an arced bridge. Um, and there was just bodies everywhere on top of each other, um, scrambling, trying to scramble to safety. I remember this um, army guard sort of standing in my way saying, no, you can't go in there and holding a machine gun across his chest. Now, I'm 5'10 uh, and about uh, 88 kilos. He would have been six foot six and probably 130 kilos. So uh, he had me for size, but something came over me. I grabbed him by the gun and threw him out the way and kept running. So an inner strength came from somewhere, um, survival instinct, uh, call it what you like, but I needed to find my brother. Anyway, sure enough, saw him scrambling up the hill. Um, he was dragging a couple of people with him. Um, so he was safe, but we lost four, four lives that night from the Australian team. Um, not the Australian football team, but the Australian team um, overall. And I remember us getting sort of, once we'd got everyone out of the water, um, I remember us being ushered back to this yard, the holding yard, put on buses, taken back to the team camp. And all sitting there it was it was pretty silent to be honest because everyone was in disbelief of, as to what had just happened our families my family was over there from um, australia england and america they were in the stadium they couldn't get any communication with us uh, 1997 so mobile phones weren't a weren't a, a luxury back then um sorry they were a luxury they weren't uh, very common um anyway got back to the team hotel and the chef de mission um, for the Australian team, stood up on stage. I, I only remember his name as Tom, but um, started talking to us, giving us some messages uh, with a real empathy, um, but a real strength and firmness about his voice. And straight away, I felt much calmer. I just felt like, you know, we're in safe hands here. Um, you know, we'll have to go through a process and, and, and all sorts of stuff. But just the leadership that was shown that night to settle us down and... and make us understand what had just happened and, and then what the steps were to, to put in place to um, to go forward was, was really important to me. It was, it was probably the moment where leadership really meant something to me and I thought, this is what I want to do. I, I want to be a leader. I want, I want to, you know, the dressing room that day with Northern Spirit and the youth team was one thing, but this was like a leader in a crisis situation showing real strength and uh, it really resonated with me.